I'm Nikki Lowe and welcome to the Wisdom for Working Mums podcast show where I share insights and interviews that support women to combine their family, work and life in a more successful and sustainable way. Hi and welcome to another episode of the Wisdom for Working Mums podcast show and I'm your host Nikki Lowe. I'm so glad you chose to join me for this special episode today. And it's special for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's my first solo episode since my launch podcast. Um, So most of my episodes have been interviews with other people and experts. And I've had so many of my clients and supporters and friends turn around to me and say, It's great that you're showcasing everybody else, but we want to hear your stuff. And it kind of got me thinking, because if you don't know my background, I'm an award-winning executive coach. I've spent the last 14 years supporting leaders in some of the world's kind of largest organisations. I'm an accredited coach by one of the UK's most prestigious coaching organisations, which basically means that I've had to really demonstrate my corporate background, my um, leadership capability, um, my coaching capability, and also my psychological mindedness. And I say that not to impress you, but actually to, to share with you that I've got some really good stuff. But like many of us, I'm not as good as I could be in sharing it and blowing my own trumpet. And I realise that I'm actually doing you, my listener, a disservice with that. So that's about to change in this podcast. So I'm here showing up on my own and want to share with you some hopefully really, really good stuff. If you're listening to this podcast when it launches, we're literally on the cusp of the new year. It launches on New Year's Eve 2019. So I hope you're ready to say hello to 2020. And I'm here today to help you make 2020 your best year yet. And what I'm going to share with you today is really a simple but powerful strategy to start this new year and obviously new decade. But don't worry if you're listening to this, not at the beginning of the new year, at some other point, because what I'm going to share with you will come in handy any time of the year. And really, What I'm going to share with you is common sense, but with most things, common sense doesn't mean that it's common practice. So just because we know it doesn't mean that we're doing it. And I think that's especially true of what I'm going to share today when we're busy working mums. And what I'm hoping is this, this podcast is going to give you a gift when you listen to it. And it's a gift that will hopefully give you many returns in the year ahead. So I wanted to start off by sharing a story and it's something that recently happened to me Um, and I think you might be able to relate to it. So a few months ago I went to a leadership training event and there was this fantastic inspirational speaker um, by the name of a guy called Marcus Child and he did this brilliant presentation and part way through he asked a question that quite frankly floored me. And and as I sat with my notepad in this conference room, reflecting on the question, a tear started to roll down my cheek and I was kind of a bit surprised and just kind of wiped it away. But then another tear came and then another one. And for those that are close to me and know me, I actually am not somebody that cries a lot in public and I wish I'd, I did more I wish I, I showed those emotions more but I, I, I don't so this kind of surprised me and so what it made me think was there's some real power in that question that Marcus has just asked and so I'd like to share that question with you and the question was what are the three things that you're most proud of this year And it's a simple question, really, don't you think? And as with most things, there's power in simplicity. And the speaker got us to briefly reflect on this question and then share our answer with a partner. And I got paired up with 
uh, a man called John and I'd not met him before and Marcus had encouraged us to pair up with somebody that we didn't know to kind of share our, our kind of proud moments and this guy John was I would say in his late 50s and kind of perhaps early 60s and when I paired up with him I kind of brushed away my tears because I didn't want to kind of show him that emotion because I didn't know him it was kind of like a I felt really vulnerable in that moment and wasn't comfortable sharing it with a stranger um but in kind of brushing my tears aside I also in that moment kind of discarded the wisdom in them I didn't really listen to that wisdom um and I I kind of tuned in to to what John had got to share around his his kind of proud moment and what John shared was a story about one of his close business friends who'd got diagnosed with cancer earlier this year and John had made himself a promise that he would take time off from his busy schedule to visit his friend and just sit with him whilst he was kind of recovering from his cancer treatment but three months from his diagnosis his friend unfortunately died and John shared that he was proud that he'd taken the time to just sit and be with his friend before his death and as you can imagine more tears rolled down my cheek and the power in that question that Marcus had asked us was really in my instant reaction because actually my instant reaction was to say I can't think of anything that I'm proud of And then my mind was kind of frantically searching for something amazing. And my mind went, I still can't think of anything. Well, other than that, I'm proud of raising my two children. But it kind of felt like I was discounting it, like it was a given. And of course, as a mum, I'm kind of beyond proud of my children. But I kind of was like, well, everybody's proud of their kids. And But then I realised that I wasn't giving myself the credit. I wasn't taking the time to reflect on how proud I should be of myself for the role that I'm playing in helping to raise such amazing children. But again, my mind kind of went, well, every mum's amazing in doing that. There's nothing special in that. And the reason I'm sharing it with you is my guess is I'm not alone in finding it hard to reflect on what I'm proud of and give myself the credit for it. Well, it's more than a guess. It's kind of my experience supporting hundreds of women over the years as an executive coach I know we're not great at giving ourselves credit at all and so those tears were kind of almost a a sadness of not being able to acknowledge myself and they were tears also about losing myself in motherhood because the realization was that I'd not taken the time at the beginning of this year so at the beginning of 2019 to actually decide what feeling good in my life was actually about and I felt kind of sad about that so sad that part of me wanted to take time for me outside of being a mum but I'd not given myself permission to do this so if you'd like to start this new year and new decade in a powerful way then I wanted to share something with you that I'm hoping will be useful for you and will be powerful and it's really simple because it's just three simple questions but as I said often there's real power in simplicity so the first question I'd like to ask you is get you to ask yourself really is what did I do create or experience that I'm really proud of this year so what did I do create or experience that I'm really proud of this year and in that I want you to think about not just what you were doing this year but who you were also being that made you proud so was it that you were being more kind or you were being more authentic or you're being more compassionate with yourself and to do this we really have to get rid of that critical kind of voice in our head our inner critic that just discounts and kind of does the well you never you're never enough you didn't do enough you didn't get fit enough you weren't successful enough we just need to tune out or almost turn the mute button onto those voices because they kind of will always be there if we're kind of human um and i want you to tune in to the voices that go 
actually what I'm really proud of is so that first question is what did I do create or experience that I'm really proud of in 2019 and the second question is what lessons did I learn that I can leverage in this new year and new decade because we don't just learn from experience we learn from reflecting on our experiences and how often do we give ourselves the gift of time of reflecting and if I'm honest as a busy working mum I'm not great at taking that reflection time I have to consciously create it and I do that by choosing to have coaches and mentors that help me to do that but if I'm left to my own devices I'm normally running at 200 miles an hour and I'm very forwards looking I'm I'm very future orientated and I'm not great at kind of reflecting on the past and really we talk about hindsight is 2020 and actually we're going into 2020 and what we mean when we say hindsight is 2020 is a normal person with good vision has 2020 sight. And that phrase that we use to say hindsight is 2020 is it's about it's easy to know the right thing after something's happened, but it's hard to predict the future. But if we take the time out to reflect and take the time to gather our learning and wisdom, we can have some kind of foresight about going into a new year. So I'd like you to get your 2020 vision with using your 2020 hindsight and take that into this new year and new decade. And I don't know if you've ever watched the speech that Steve Jobs gave to graduating students at Stanford University in, I think it was 2005, but it's a really powerful speech and I'll put a link in the show notes um, to the video on YouTube. It's not long, it's only about 10 minutes, but it's incredibly powerful And Steve Jobs says in this speech that you can't join the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. And really for me, that quote is about reflecting on this year allows you to connect all those dots that have happened and see a clearer path into the new year and new decade. So I'd really like you to reflect on that question. What lessons did I learn that I can leverage in this new year and new decade? So what things maybe didn't go according to plan? What might have been some of the powerful and painful lessons that you learned? All of those things will hold huge wisdom about what you might want and what you might want to do differently in the new year. And the final question is, what am I willing to let go of? So thinking about what's held you back in 2019, what's got in the way of you feeling fulfilled, free, happy, or whatever feeling it is that you want. So what could be holding you back might be a feeling, it might be resentment, anger, hurt, shame, or it might be goals or commitments that you've kind of had on your to-do list that are no longer serving you. It could also be stories that you're telling yourself. It could be beliefs about yourself, about life, about motherhood that are no longer serving you. So that question, what am I willing to let go of? In 2019, going into 2020, so this new year and this new decade. Because when I look at how people look at at what they want it's not about doing more we kind of live in a culture that perpetuates more doing you know and and hustling and um putting ourselves under more pressure to do stuff but actually this is about doing less but doing things that are right for us that are really serve us and our families that are more intentional more aligned with our values because a meaningful and fulfilled life doesn't just happen spontaneously We have to consciously create it. So if you want to find fulfillment in 2020 and beyond, I encourage you to start living intentionally. And to help you do that, I've actually created a masterclass, a live masterclass that I'm going to be delivering called Creating Your Best Year Yet. And in it, I'm going to be sharing the tools and strategies 
to help you thrive in the new year and new decade as a working mum. And in this two hour live online masterclass that I'm delivering on Sunday, the 5th of January. And don't worry if you can't join live, you can have access to a replay. So sign up anyway, even if you can't make it live. In this two hour live online masterclass, I'm going to be sharing the powerful steps to reflect and review on 2019, just as we've started to do on this podcast, but at a more deeper level that will enable you to take your success and learnings into the new year and the new decade. I'm also going to be covering a goal setting strategy that I learned from working with Olympic athletes and Olympic sports psychologists. And it's a proven approach. I've used it with hundreds of people over the years about what to focus on when and why to achieve your goals in 2020. So it's kind of quite um, a powerful kind of intentional goal setting approach even if you're not into goal setting because I'm not hugely goal orientated I'm more experience orientated but it's a really powerful framework to actually think about what do I need to focus on and when I'll also be sharing the game-changing mindset tools that can help you to get out of your own way and create your best year yet with more ease and less stress as a working mum And I'll also be sharing the time and energy secrets to help you achieve your dreams without burning out in 2020 and beyond. Because as busy working mums, we really need some hacks around how we manage our time and energy to do that. So if you're interested in this masterclass, head over to Facebook, Wisdom for Working Mums, and you'll find all the links to be able to sign up there. But really, what I wanted to be able to do was share in this podcast with you kind of these questions to help you reflect on and hopefully the answers will be powerful in reflecting for the year ahead and the decade ahead and I would love to hear your answers from you and I genuinely mean that I love to hear from people who are listening to the podcast because I record these podcasts they go out into the ether and I have people contact me and say I've listened and it genuinely just really warms my heart because I I send these podcasts out into the world not knowing who's going to listen to them and what impact they're going to have so I really love to hear from you and what I wanted to say is that I want this to 2020 to be your best year yet. The year that you really create, acknowledge and celebrate the moments that you're proud of. So take care and sending you love for 2020 and beyond. As always, thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode of Wisdom for Working Mums, please share it on social media and with your friends and family. I'd love to connect with you too. So if you head over to wisdomforworkingmums.co.uk, you'll find a link on how to do this. And if you love the show and really want to support it, please go to iTunes, write a review and subscribe. You'll be helping another working mum find this resource too. Thanks so much for listening.